Hey everyone, welcome back. Today we're going to be talking about a very useful feature that I just learned about in the SJ ASM Plus assembler, which is local labels. Now I've used labels in my previous examples, and as we know, labels are text words that are used to represent memory addresses or memory locations where chunks of code are stored or pieces of data could be stored. So for example, if we take a look at my program here, I have some labels that are in my program. This one is called start, this one is called sub one, this one is called dot loop one, and this one is called dot loop two. So what are these labels uh, that are referred to as local labels and how do they differ from the other labels which are non-local labels, otherwise known as global labels, which I don't know if that's an actual term, but that's what I'm calling them. So this is kind of similar to what you may be familiar with the terms local and global variables in programming languages. Of course, Z80 assembly language doesn't use variables, but it does use labels. And here we can use local labels and non-local labels. So first let's take a look at the documentation for the SJ ASM Plus assembler, which I'll just bring up right here. So if you can see here, I'm looking at the section where it talks about labels in chapter three. And first it says here about regular labels, and these instructions I'm reading now are referring to how labels are used specifically in the SJ ASM Plus assembler. And it says labels are case sensitive and may be of any reasonable length, that is up to about 70 characters. And it says label definitions must start on the beginning of a line, but don't have to be followed by a colon. So if we take a look at my program again, you can see my label here, for example, start. It does fall on the very first column of this editor. So it's in the very left hand most column, which is where it needs to be in order to identify it as a label. And in this case, I have put a colon after it although that text just said that we don't need to use the colon, so the colon is optional. Now let's go back and take a look at local labels. So I'll just scroll down here to the section on local labels, and let's take a look at part of this description that is of interest to us, which says, to use a label from outside the module, use module name dot label name. And I'll explain how we do that in a moment. And here it says, labels starting with a period are also local to the previous non-local label. So what does that mean? Well, we're not going to be uh, defining any modules in this example, so we can ignore the part about module definitions, which is what it's talking about there. But let's just take a look at the difference between global labels and local labels. So these two labels here, start and sub one, are what I'm calling global labels, and they're also known as non local labels. That means they're labels that can be referred to from any point in the program. The entire program is aware of these labels, it knows about these labels, and you can call them from anywhere. So for example, here underneath my start label, I have some code where I'm actually calling another label. I'm calling the sub one label, which is a subroutine. So up here in this section of my program, I'm able to call the sub one label or subroutine because that's a global or non-local label and the entire program knows how to access it. So that's not a problem. But if we look down here at these two labels that begin with a period or a dot, these are what's known as local labels and they are local to the part of the program that's underneath the previous non-local label. So where is the previous non-local label? Well, it's right here. This sub one label here, since it's not preceded by a dot, that's considered a non-local label and then these two local labels that are preceded by the dot would be considered part of this sub one section of code. So that means if I try to call these local labels from outside of this section of code, the program won't know how to do that. So for example, if I take a look up here in this start section of my program, and let's say I modify this and I put another instruction here, and I try to call one of these local labels from outside of that section of code, I'll say call, dot loop one, which is this local label right here, dot loop one, but I'm calling it from outside of this sub one section of code. So this program shouldn't know about this local label outside of that section of code. So let's see what happens when I try to assemble this program now. So here I am in my command window and I'm going to assemble it by using a previous batch command that I've created, 
which I explained in a previous video. So if you're not familiar with uh, exactly what's happening here, you can feel free to go back and watch that previous video if you like. But essentially what I'm doing is I'm running a batch file which will assemble my program. So let's go ahead and assemble the program now. And they'll do that by executing this batch file called m, which is actually m.bat, but I can execute it by just typing m. And so let's see what happens. There. So now it's tried to assemble my program, but you can see it's come up with an error message here, which says label not found start dot loop one. So why is it saying start dot loop one when I just entered dot loop one right here? Because it's thinking that this dot loop one local label is part of this start section of my code, which it's not, right? It's actually part of this sub one section of my code because it's down here. So if I want to refer to this dot loop one local label that is part of the sub one section of my code, then I need to specifically refer to it as a subsection of this sub one section of my code. And that's very easy to do. All I need to do is precede this period or this dot by the section of my code label, which is sub one. And remember these labels are case sensitive. So I have to make sure I capitalize the letters that need to be capitalized to make sure it matches completely and exactly. So now that I've modified this call instruction to specify which part of the program this local loop one label lives in, let's see what happens now when I try to assemble it. So first I'll save it and now I'll try to assemble it right here. Let's try that assembly again. And there you go. This time it assembled it with no error messages. So that's how we can use local labels in our SJ ASM Plus assembler. And in this case, I'm using the VS Code or Visual Studio Code editor. But of course, you can use whatever editor you like. And the last thing we want to discuss is why would we want to use local labels to begin with? What use are local labels? Well, it may be obvious, but the main reason we would want to use local labels is, for example, if we want to duplicate a label name in a different part of our program. So let's say up here in this start section of our program, I also wanted to use a label called dot loop one or dot loop two. I could do that because it's in a different section of my program. So that's very handy. For example, if you have a particular label that you like to use in different sections of your program, let's say loop. If you want to use a label called loop and you want to use that in every part of your program that actually has a loop, you might want to repeat that label in separate sections of your program without having to worry about which part of the program this label belongs to. And if you've already used that name somewhere before in a different part of your program, if you realize that uh, local labels can be used within their own section of the program, now we can just repeat our label names by putting a dot in front of them and just calling them from within that section of code. And of course, if we need to call them from outside that section of code, we can still do that. All we have to do is proceed that dot with the name of the label that identifies that section of code. So I hope that's useful for you. If you need to use local labels in your program, this is how you do it. And thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.